Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Mary, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We join in singing our opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. <laughs> Christ, 
so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. This time I invite uh, Mary Grant's <coughs> grandson Clay to come forward to share a poem, uh, followed then by family remembrance. Hello, this is a poem my great grandmother wanted me to read. It's called Do Not Stand. Do not stand in my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond's quint of snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the autumn's gentle rain. When you waken in the morning's hush, I am the swift, swift, uplifting rush of quiet bird in circle flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand in my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. my mom's apartment with me supervising from my wheelchair. I thought about my mom's life and the treasures that she kept. The painting of her dad done by my Aunt Celia, a picture of a Spanish lady that had been passed down for many generations, a painting of her dog Sparky, and so many photos. Family and friends were the most important part of her life as we filled a tote packed with photos and albums. And I'll interject here, that's where I see my mom and my aunt Barb got that from. She was the heart of our family and the historian of hers. When mom and dad moved from Florida in 1979, they sold their house, 28 years in Ohio, and almost all of their Midwest furniture. And they started their retirement life with a new house and southern furniture here in the Ohio. And they downsized. Sorry. Um, two other times moving to a condo in the Devoutman Crest. With each new adventure, she held on to her keepsakes. She loved to shop. I think all of us girls got that from her. <laughs> and a closet full of beautiful clothes and shoes for every occasion. I don't know that Grandpa approved. She also enjoyed starting a legacy, or I'm sorry, a literacy program the very second year after moving down here and became very proficient on the computer. She spent lots of time sending emails and FaceTiming nieces, cousins, and friends. When Dad passed away on March 1st, and then my sister Barb passed away on December 23rd, about for last year, I worried that she would close herself off from the world. With a spirit and determination, she ended up cleaning out all of Dad's safe paperwork during her life. Mom had six garbage bags full of shredding. She also started playing euchre and hand and foot with her friends at Fountain Crest, along with regular trips to the beauty shop, Walmart, Bells, and doctor's appointments. She watched more television in her loungers, now she had control of the remote. <laughs> Everyone who we know, or who we have met during our stay here, said how much they loved her, how wonderful she was, and that they will truly miss her. Shortly before we left at all on Saturday, Really? <laughs> she said, I'm ready. And then she said, I want to go home. And with a whisper, she said, you girls go play cards. Early the next morning, she went to join her family up in heaven. Um, I'll miss you, Mom. I love you. And my heavens. I'm back. Independence, love, and how to shop. She was always in her 
depressed no matter how far away. I remember one time driving from Ohio to Florida with them. And when we stopped to eat, I tried key lime pie. It was okay. I had told her I liked it when we reached Florida. She surprised me one day by making an entire key lime pie just for me. I learned to be careful telling her that I like something. I am sad that I am not present today, yet I am less this than some of her days, last days with her. I love you, Grandma. I'm going to read something for my sister Meredith. I couldn't be here, but she was here last week. <coughs> we are celebrating Grandma's life today. It was so hard to say goodbye to her. She has been an active part of my entire life, truly my second mom. Grandma had the ability to make everyone feel special and to see the good in everyone and every situation. During the challenges in life, she would also re always remind us this too shall pass. She will always be my role model. As my daughter Mackenzie would say, she is our hashtag life goals. I will always remember Grandma's special back rubs, playing old maid with her, her handmade Halloween costumes, and root beer floats. She was an amazing woman who got to experience almost a century of change. She taught herself how to use the computer, and we all know that she loved Facebook. Several years ago, my kids asked Grandma and Grandpa, what was the best invention you've seen in your life? My kids expected them to say the TV, computers, or phone, but without hesitation, Grandma answered penicillin. <laughs> she told the kids how people passed away from infections that can now be treated easily. This really demonstrated Grandma's passion for nursing and her passion for people. We will miss her smile. We will miss her caring ways. We will miss her sweet nature. We were fortunate enough to have her in our lives and will continue to cherish the special memories we have of her. Goodbye, Grandma. Thank you for showing us how to be a loving daughter, sister, wife, mother, granddaughter, and friend. We love you, America. My grandma Mary was such a big part of my life. She helped my mom raise me and my sisters. Probably not the easiest thing to do through our teenage years. Some of the fun memories I have of my grandma are when I used to spend the night, I got one-on-one -on -one time with them. We'd play games, swim in the pool. My grandma loved to watch me swim. She attended many all-day swim meets with my mom. She always was very supportive of all of our activities. Back in December when I lost my mom, I felt like my grandma and I got even closer. I needed her and she needed me. I would pick her up in my Camaro and put the top down and she loved it. Didn't even care that her hair got messed up. Every Wednesday was grandma night. I would make sure I went to see her. We had dinner, went shopping, or just talked. I had a new relationship with her that I hadn't had before and I loved it. I really needed her. She is a woman that I can honestly say I want to be like. I don't think my grandma ever had a bad thing to say about anybody. She loved her family and her faith was strong and she has a lot to do with the person that I am today. I admire her relationship with my grandpa and I've learned what makes a marriage work. I'm so happy that my boys got to know and grow up knowing their great grandma and what a wonderful person she was. Even in her last days, she was thanking my husband, Tim, for coming into my life, as she knew he was the one for me. I will miss her terribly, but I know she is with my mom, watching over all of us. My grandma was a huge part of my life. My mom was a little bit of a wild, energetic, go, 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 fun grandma, fun mom. And my grandma provided the calmness that our family needed. She was always there, like Andrew mentioned, from moving to Florida with us in 1979, to 
picking us up at school when he got sick, to taking us to school when he missed the bus, which was mostly me, <laughs> to encouraging my mom to go out and she would babysit us. She was always there to cheer me on during all my events, from swimming, to ballet, cheerleading, softball. She was even there at my school competitions, cheering me on at the science fair. She was always there. I have many amazing memories of Grandma. One of my favorites is at, at Halloween. Every year, she would hand sew our costumes. We would take a trip to Joanne Fabrics, we'd pick out a pattern, and Grandma was always up for the challenge. One of my favorites was a scarecrow costume that she would have stuck in the hay of my sleeves and the bottom of my pants. And my favorite one was a pumpkin that she made for me. And back then they didn't have colored tights, so she dyed my tights orange, and she found me little pumpkin glasses, and a big pumpkin hat, and a complete pumpkin. And she filled me so much with newspapers that it was hard for me to walk house to house. So she rolled me in her car and drove me house to house. <laughs> it was such a fun night. We laughed about it. I learned so many things from my grandma, and I admire so many of her traits. We talked about her shopping and her fashion sense. She has so many matching heels and purses. When she got older, we asked her to stop wearing the heels, and she said she couldn't. She always looked beautiful. I admire her willingness to learn new things, especially in technology. I remember when the internet first came out, Grandma went and took classes that they were giving to seniors to learn to use the internet. Grandma was really savvy. She would send us emails with stationary backgrounds. She tried Priceline before any of us did. And then Andrew and I saw her on Facebook. Okay? And she spent hours on Facebook. I admire her devotion to her marriage to my grandma. We asked her what it takes to have a happy marriage. And she said compromise and communication. The day after my grandma passed, I was spending the morning with my grandma. And she told me that she would wake up early every other morning take a shower, get dressed, makeup and everything, to go have breakfast with Grandpa, and she didn't even like breakfast. <laughs> but she did it to spend more time with him. But the quality I admire the most about her is her positive <coughs> in life. She could find the good in any situation and in any person. She always had a smile on her face. She had a kind word to say to everyone. Her glass was always half full. If we were all like, more like my Grandma Mary, the world would be a happier, more positive place. Thank you, Grandma, for loving me. Thank you for loving my husband, Aaron. Thank you for loving my kids. And I love being your great daughter. back in my childhood, most of my fondest memories are centered on my grandparents, where my grandpa was my vision of strong and steady, and my grandma was gentle, kind, and sweet. My grandma Mary always had the smile that brightened the room. As kids, we would play old maid with grandma, and in the best grandma fashion, she would never let us know that she was on to our cheating. She would pull the old maid card and light up smiling as we giggled when she was in again. Her smile was always the first thing to greet us when we arrived to visit and never left her face while we were there. Grandma's joy could be felt through the phone, and she was always available to listen and give, give good, loving advice. I may not have had the quantity in terms of time with my grandma, but she always made sure that we had the quality time. She made a point to keep up with all of our activities and was still keeping up with us as late as two weeks ago. Grandma, I will forever be a better person because of your advice and your example of kindness and grace. Thank you. I love you. And from my, her grandson. Grandma Mary was a kind, loving, sweet grandmother who was filled with faith and love spending time with her grandchildren and family. Even when times were challenging, she always had a smile on her face and words of encouragement to lift herself and those around her up. I'm sure it was a blessing for my grandfather to be married for 75 years to a lady who was both beautiful inside and out, and radiated warmth to those around here. It was certainly a pleasure to be her grandson. Some of my most cherished memories as a kid are being with my grandmother. She was a fun grandma. She would play cards with us as kids at her house, and we didn't figure out until years later that she was often letting us win. As a kid growing up in Toledo, it was wonderful to be able to visit my grandparents in Florida 
swim in their pool, and enjoy the special one-on-one -on -one time. My grandparents loved all six of their grandchildren. That was without a doubt clear to every one of them. My grandmother always told me she was proud of me, and that meant something to me as her only grandson. I'm so blessed that my own children were able to meet both of my grandparents and spend some time with them. My grandma and grandpa had the dignity, grace, and character that is unique to their generation. There's a reason they're called the greatest generation. My grandmother was always a lady, always filled with faith and always devoted to her family. She lived a life that was a blessing to four generations, her own, my mother and aunts, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. What a triumph and what a life well lived. Who could ask for anything more than that? Turn to our reading. Okay, first reading is Job 19, 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written down, oh, that they were inscribed in a book, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. We join in together in reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi, I'm Finley. I'm Grandma Mary's great granddaughter. And that should be named after her. Her maiden name is Finley. I'll be reading an excerpt from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 35, and 37 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withstand his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any change against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who at the right hand from God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress? or prosecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. No. All these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Well, Don and Mary Ruth's family are wonderful, but I have to admit that I'm tired of seeing you. <laughs> As we've gathered for now three memorial celebration of life services in just about 18 months. Don and Mary, Mary and Don. You couldn't separate the two. You couldn't separate the names. You couldn't separate who they were as husband and wife and as people of God. When I got here about nine, a little over nine years ago, I was introduced to Don and Mary, and I could tell right away that they were indeed the patriarch and matriarch of this congregation. The heart and soul, if you will, as they took their place in the third row right on the aisle every week. And over the time, if you've been here this long, you have a chance to get to know people pretty well. And I got to know Don and Mary very well, and particularly Mary over the last year as I would go and visit with her, and she would sit and we would talk, and she would tell stories just as well as her husband Don did. <laughs> and she would talk about her family and her upbringing and all of those things. But it's also wonderful that after nine years, when you think that you know almost everything about someone, that you learn something new. And I learned something new up to, up to about Mary uh, a few weeks ago. It was when we, I gathered, uh, uh, she, uh, Andrea and uh, Aaron asked me to come to the hospital because Mary had sort of made her decision. She said, I, I'm done. I don't want to do any more stuff to keep me alive. I want to just live out my life the rest of it with quantity, or quality, not quantity at this point. And as we were talking, the, the hospice social worker was there, and she was talking about the things they could do. And, and, and I, one of the, either Andrew or Aaron joked sort of, yeah, we can bring something in for you to drink, Grandma. And the hospice worker said, yeah, you can do that. You can bring in stuff, whatever you want. And, and I think the granddaughter was thinking, you know, we're bringing some wine. And no, but Mary, this is what I learned about Mary. This is what Mary said she wanted in that drink. She said, I want a pina colada. <laughs> This past week I was in Atlanta at a continued ed conference and I was driving back on Sunday after finding out that Mary had passed away Sunday morning and I got to the gas station I got back into my car and I turned the car on. Shortly as I got on the road, the song came on. If you like me, I said, thank you, Mary. Yes, I'm on my way. But there's an image I have of Mary as I was thinking about the one thing that will stick in my mind for the rest of my life. And the image I have of Mary is Mary sitting. Not just sitting in a chair, but Mary sitting by Don's bedside in the hospital. The image of Mary sitting by her daughter Barb in the hospital. The image of Mary sitting in worship on the aisle. Because as when Don passed away, Don was always the one that got the aisle seat. And Don, if you remember, if you were here for Don's memorial site, I talked about Don being the, the mayor of Gateway. How everyone would greet him. But when Don passed away, Mary had no problem sliding over to that one seat. <laughs> Mary wasn't the mayor, but Mary was the smile on the aisle. That everyone who passed by, she smiled and would shake her hands or give them a knowing nod. You see, this sitting represented more than just Mary sitting and bringing comfort to Don or to Barb or anyone else she was sitting next to. It was more than Mary just sitting in worship. This sitting represented Mary's confidence in who she knew Jesus to be. She sat by those bedsides and she sat in worship knowing that Jesus was there with her. There were a number of times where Mary could have complained, could have shouted out and said, why are all these things happening to me? But Mary always knew that Jesus was with her. I can't help but think of the, the, the reading in the gospel this morning where Martha comes to Jesus and sort of complains that had you been here, like my brother would not have died. But Jesus says, don't you believe that I am the way, the truth, and the life? Do you know that if you believe in me, you will have eternal life? Do you believe these things? And just as Martha answered them, Mary answered them on a daily basis. Yes, I believe that you are the Messiah, the one who is coming into the world. No matter what happened, no matter what circumstance came up in her life, Mary always believed. She was a woman who had this amazing faith. Couldn't help but laugh to myself this morning as I was thinking about the link between this service today and the service we'll have tomorrow. Tomorrow Sunday morning represents for us as Lutheran's Reformation Sunday, but it's also a Sunday where we celebrate the affirmation of faith of what's commonly called confirmation. As we have five freshmen who will come forward and profess their faith, 
that they will now be taken responsible for their faith as they move on into their lives. And I counted up the ages of the confirmation students, which it comes up to about 76 years. They still have 20 plus years to get to Mary's lifetime. But there is a deep link between those two things. The faithfulness that Mary had for 97 plus years. And the faithfulness that those five students will profess tomorrow is the same faith. But my prayer for them is that they have just one ounce of the faith that Mary had. In fact, that's my prayer for all of us, that all of us could have just one ounce of the faith that Mary had throughout her life. It's a testament by those who are gathered here to celebrate her life, but also by the testament that was read by her grandchildren this morning. The love and care all came from her belief and trust that Jesus was the center of her life. And everything that extended out from Mary and to her family came from that faith. So that's my prayer for us this morning as we celebrate her life. And I can't help but think and have that image now in my mind of Mary now sitting with Don and with Barb on the aisle seat as she now listens to Jesus. <coughs> And I can't help but think that not only she's sitting, but maybe, just maybe, she has enough guts to kick up her feet and kick back. And maybe now she has that pina colada. <laughs> the life that was Mary's is a life that we can all hope to have. A faith that is so deep and so wide that it is an inspiration not only to her family, but to her congregation and her friends to her God. Amen. <laughs> the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. 
God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink from this cup, remember me. And Jesus remembers in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table of the Lord is ready. All are welcome. Come and eat. We may be seated. So this morning, uh, as, after I uh, commune the communion assistance here in just a moment, we'll invite you to come forward via the center aisle where you receive a piece of bread. You consume the bread and then move to the next station over, which has a tray. Uh, the, great, the wine is the purple on the outside. If you would like grape juice, that's the white on the inner, inside ring. Once you've drunk the, the wine or the grape juice, you may place it in the basket on the side and then re return to your seat via the side aisle.
God of peace who brought you again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything, good in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in singing the doctrine. Thanks be to God.